All right, so this is Jeep Update 73, and in 73, we're going to install the Mosier one-piece made in the USA axle shaft kit. Before we get into the installation of that, I've got to kind of go back in time a little bit and kind of explain some things about why I'm putting this kit in, because if you follow along with the, or if you followed along with the Jeep build, and even if you followed along, you may not have caught this, but about three years ago, I had a, a shop do some work on my Jeep, and long story short, there's some issues with that work, uh, but, but I had a one-piece axle shaft kit installed at that time. Now, fast forward a couple of years later, um, once I got my engine swap done and I started cleaning everything up on the underside of the Jeep, I noticed that this uh, axle shaft, or I'm sorry, axle seal, the inner axle seal was uh, leaking pretty bad. And I don't know why I never noticed that before, but when we changed the fluids on the AMC 20 and topped it off, it probably uh, got past that seal and maybe my fluid level was a little bit low so I didn't see the, the leak or it was slight enough where I didn't see it. But once we topped off the AMC 20 with, uh, with new gear oil, it came pouring out like a flood. So I changed the inner axle seal <clears throat> and when I made that video and I pulled the axle shaft out, a couple of, uh, a couple of you guys, a couple of you guys uh, said, hey, bud, your, uh, your axle bearing is on backwards. And I was like, okay, you know, help me understand that, explain a little bit more. And they did. Uh, and I did some research on my own. And I was pretty convinced that uh, the axle bearing was installed backwards. So that prompted me to then pull the entire axle shaft out again to look at the bearing and the orientation of it. And then I, not knowing what quality of parts he put in and all the problems I've had with that shop, not knowing the kit that he used to put in, um, I went ahead and ordered a brand new kit so I can kind of start over. And it's the Mosier kit, again, made in the USA, and I'm gonna show you that kit in just a minute. So when I got the Mosier kit, I started going through that kit, and I looked at the instructions, and I'm like, what the heck? The bearing is exactly the way that the other shop installed it, and it doesn't show that it's backwards. And this is a very unusual Timken bearing, and I'll show it to you. So long story, a little bit longer, trying to make this short, this part short. I ended up calling Mosier and confirming some things with them. So number one, I kind of told the guy on the phone, he was very patient with me, kind of told him a little bit of the story of uh, everybody, you know, a couple of you guys saying my, that my axle shaft bearing is on installed, pressed onto the axle shaft backwards. And backwards, according to what I was being told, was the large part of the bearing uh, facing you know as closest to the tire and then as the bearing tapers down that's closest to the differential and so what essentially these guys were saying is that's causing the when it's up against the race it's essentially causing the axle to try to push away from the differential and out of the Jeep which wouldn't be very good so that kind of got my attention a little bit I called Mosier like I said I kind of explained things to this guy and he said absolutely not the bearing is installed correctly because on the one-piece axle shaft kits, it uses a Timken Set 9 bearing, which I'll show you in just a minute, that has a, a flange on it. I've never seen one of these on a bearing before, and the bearing has to go on that way. And on the two-piece axle shafts, which is what comes originally in an AMC 20, that's where the bearing is turned backwards. But on the one-piece kit, the bearing is exactly the way it shows. And the Mosier instructions show the bearing facing that way as well with the large part of the bearing towards the tire and the smaller tapered end of the bearing towards the differential. So I confirmed everything with Mosier and I'm gonna take them at their word and I'm gonna reinstall their kit or install their kit uh, with the bearing the way that they are saying that it should go because it's the one piece axle shaft upgrade. All right, so I know that was kind of a long introduction but I wanted to kind of explain the background because a couple of you guys might say, hey, John, why are you doing this? You already got the one piece axle shaft kit. I do, and we pulled it out. And interestingly enough, um, while the bearing was oriented the correct way uh, for the one piece axle shaft kit, what, didn't, what he didn't do at the shop, uh, and I didn't know this until just now, is there's a stop that's pressed on with the bearing, and that stop is supposed to be all the way up against the bearing. And that stop uh, was about a quarter inch shy of the bearing. So that allowed that bearing to kind of bounce around um, and kind of hit that race. And I can tell you that those bearings in my Jeep uh, from three years ago when that guy did the install were just about to come apart. And they were, you could move them in a way uh, pressed onto the axle shaft 
that the that a bearing shouldn't move. So ultimately, the guys that uh, you guys, that couple of you guys out there that that told me that the bearing was installed incorrectly, I really appreciate that because this kind of prompted me to do all this research and to call Mosier and kind of confirm things. And you guys aren't wrong, and I, and I appreciate you guys calling it out. You're not wrong as long as it's the two-piece axle shaft, but on the one-piece kit, particularly the Mosier one, I can't speak to the other one that's in there because I don't know the manufacturer of it, but on the two, on the one-piece Mosier kit, uh, the bearing is oriented in the way that it was in the video uh, when you guys called it out. So again, confirm that through Mosier and feel good that uh, I'm going to reinstall everything the right way. After talking through the instructions with the guy from Mosier, I feel really good about it. So there it is. All right, so I know that that just kind of made the long introduction even longer, but uh, I wanted to show you, share with you the background and, and how, it, how I got to the place that I'm at today with these axle shafts. So the, I got the Mosier kit right behind me. I've opened it up. I've not done anything with it except taking the parts out and kind of looked at them and also um, looked at the instructions. So let's go through what comes in the kit and then we'll go from there and start tearing into this and get these, uh, get these new axle shafts installed. All right, so obviously I've got my uh, tire off uh, right there and I've got my drum off and staring at my uh, brake shoes, springs and wheel cylinders, all that. This is the outer part of the axle shaft and in order to get this off, um, you've got to align this hole right here with the bolts that are on the back of the backing plate. And I'll show you that a little bit more detail. And really, once you do that, this whole thing will kind of slide out. What ends up stopping you? Well, you gotta take your brake line off. What ends up stopping you is this emergency brake cable. So you have kind of a choice to make uh, because you really don't have to disassemble your entire backing plate here. If you can get to that emergency brake cable where it attaches over here and you can work it out and if you can do that, take off your brake line, undo the bolts that are holding it by moving this and aligning those bolt heads with this. Uh, you can kind of see one right there. I don't know if that'll show up on the camera. Yeah, there's one right there. So you turn that around and align that with the bolts and you take those off, emergency brake cable and or the disassembly of your entire brake shoes uh, your backing plate, and again, your brake line, and then all this just slides out. In my prior video, when we changed this inner axle seal, I said you had to take apart your whole brake shoes, and one of the viewers on my channel said, uh, very very nicely said, hey, you don't have to do that. You can get it out if you can just do your emergency brake, and that will save you some time. I, I'm going to tell you that I'm going to go ahead and uh, disassemble the entire thing because I want to take this backing plate um, down into the basement and uh, wire wheel it down, clean it up, and get it painted. All right, so I'm probably not going to film a lot of the disassembly of this part. I'll come back when I'm taking the axle shaft out. But I'm going to go ahead and get these off and uh, save, some, save a little bit of time so we can get to the uh, installation of the Mosier kit, which is uh, what this video is really all about. All right, so I have the, uh, the brake shoes and all the springs disassembled there. Um, I've got my brake line off. You can see it leaking there. I've got the four bolts out that hold the axle shaft in, and I have removed my emergency brake cable, so this thing is ready to just pull out. All right, I'm down here in the basement. I got both uh, axle shafts out, and ironically, we're right in the middle of a gear change on this uh, Camaro build that I'm doing, and that uh, GM 10 bolt right there, so, um, Hopefully I don't get any of these parts mixed up, but I've got to try to get my backing plates off, which is going to require me to get that bearing off. It actually doesn't look like it's on there very well, but this collar is, and I'm going to have to play around with that. Now, I've got new parts here. Everything is new that I have, so I don't really care if I damage this stuff. I would prefer not to, um, so I'm going to try not to damage anything, but um, I'm going to see if I can use an air hammer and get that thing off. All right, so this is the Mosier kit in the box, and obviously you've got uh, your axle shaft there, one piece. It's got the uh, Preston lug nuts already, so that's kind of nice. And the other one is over here. Like I said, I haven't taken it out yet. This bag is all your bearings and seals. And let me kind of give you a quick rundown of what you got. So you've got two new inner seals right there. You've got two of the outer seals 
There's the other one. They give you some uh, gray silicone material. You've got a Timken Set 9 bearing there and a Set 9 bearing here, and I'll show you that in more detail in just a second. And then you've got your two stops. These are your bearing stops that get pressed on with the bearing. And then you've got these pieces here that go in up against the seal, and I'll show you the diagram here in just a minute. And this is the piece that you're going to grind down so that you have the appropriate clearance for the bearing. And I'll explain that more in just a minute. All right, so these are the instructions here. And so you've got your axle. This is the outer axle here with the, uh, you know, where your lug nuts are. And then this is the splined end that goes into the differential. And so essentially, you've got this pressed or this uh, bearing spacer ring installed in the housing end, and that's this piece here. And you can see it's got a lip on it, and that lip should face towards the axle shaft. I'm sorry, towards the, uh, yeah, this part of the axle shaft where the tire is. So this should face the tire, and this actually doesn't go on the axle shaft. It gets pushed and uh, hit into the axle housing. Then after that, you've got your press ring and your Timken bearing. That's this guy here. And then your bearing. And this bearing is a set nine bearing, and this will go. So the, the, the press ring and the bearing get pressed onto your axle shaft. And there's a machined uh, stop on the axle shaft that will tell you uh, how far to go with this. But when you're done, these two pieces should be together. And on the old one that I just pulled out of my Jeep, uh, that was about a quarter inch apart. And I can tell you that bearing was literally about to come apart. So to show you this bearing in a little bit more detail and the races on the outside of that, but it's got a flange on the outside on the larger end um, that's part of the bearing. And the race rests up against that. And it's for that reason that this bearing can go the way that the instructions say with the tapered end of the bearing, this end towards the differential, and this end facing out towards the wheel. All right, so if you look at that picture right there of the bearing, you can kind of see that that flanged end is again towards the backing plate, towards the, towards the tire, and then the little end, the tapered end, is towards the splines, which is towards the differential. And that is the correct way to uh, press that bearing on. And one thing you have to remember with this kit is that once you press everything on, it's kind of a one-time shot. So you have to do your adjusting and your measurements and your, uh, your clearancing before you press that on and before you install the seal. Because if you install the seal in the inner axle, uh, you're going to have to take that bearing spacer ring in and out a couple times probably to get it right, and you're going to destroy that seal uh, taking that in and out. So don't put the seal in. And don't press anything onto the axle shaft until you get your clearance correct. And then when you do press things onto the axle shaft, you have to make sure you put the, uh, the outer seal and your backing plate on first in the correct orientation, and then your press ring and your Timken bearing. And that's how it all goes together. So the other diagram on the instructions, this is your axle shaft, and that's your inner seal. And that's why you don't put that in until you're, you have all your clearance, clearancing done because there's two steps, two machine steps inside that axle tube at the axle housing. One is for the seal and then one is for the spacer. And that spacer, again, is what you have to machine down until you're at 0.02 to 0.08 clearance of the bearing. That may not make much sense with me just explaining it, but once I show it, it'll make sense. So here is the old inner seal, the old spacer ring, and that's where your bearing sits right here in the race. And that bearing cannot stick out this way more than 0 0.02 to 0 0.08 clearance to that lip right there. And so that's kind of the tricky part of this installation. And, and every I think every axle is going to be a little bit different, and you're just going to have to keep grinding that down that uh, spacer, uh, this piece right here, until you get the appropriate clearance. And like I said, that's the tricky part of this, but uh, let's get into it and let's see if we can get it done. All right, since I got everything apart to that point, I am going ahead and taking advantage. And I did clean up and uh, paint these backing plates. Now I get it, they're uh, brake backing plates, but uh, man, they look a lot better. 
I did the drums as well. I even look at these things sideways, they start rusting. It shows through your wheels and it just doesn't look good. So a little bit of uh, cleaning, a little bit of work there. There's Jake, <laughs> likes to get in the, uh, likes to get in the uh, picture. Got some feathers on his nose, <laughs> Jake, stop. Stop eating those feathers. Yeah, there was a hawk that killed a bird back here and there's feathers everywhere. I mean, it looked like a murder scene, but with feathers. But uh, Jake's slowly cleaning those up. But anyways, there's the uh, brake drums. I gotta do one more coat of black, and then I uh, should be good to go to put all this stuff back together. All right, so to get started on the installation, I've gotta get the uh, old seal and the old spacer out. And for that, I'm gonna use this uh, slide hammer, this gear wrench slide hammer. So that gear wrench kit really makes short work of uh, pulling seals and uh, spacers like this. And if you're interested in that kit, I'll put a link down in the description box uh, to Amazon. That's where I bought it. I think it's about 75 bucks. So <clears throat> now that those are out of the way, you can kind of see uh, that's where the seal rests back here. I don't know how well you can see that. And then you've got one uh, area here and another area here. Uh, and this is where the... Uh, the spacer will rest, and you're supposed to put this in per the instructions with that lip uh, facing towards you. And so you're just gonna put it in like this. And notice I'm not putting the seal in because this is all part of the test fitting. And I'm gonna have to probably use that same kit again to pull this out once I drive it in. And if you put the seal in there, you're gonna end up ruining your seal. So I'm gonna get a uh, punch and I'm gonna punch that thing in. All right, so I got the uh, spacer driven in, and then I've put my bearing in in the appropriate orientation per Mosier, and I've got my feeler gauge, and I've got a 0 .035 and a 0 .032 together, so that's 0 .068, and the spec range is 0 .02 to 0 .08, so 0 .068 is at the you know the higher end of that range, but if you put this on here. It's kind of dead even. Um, so I actually think this is in spec right here without having to do any kind of grinding on it at all or any clearancing to get it to sit further back. Um, it's flush with that, and that's 0 0.068 on a max uh, clearance of 0 0.08. So I may grind that down just a little bit just to feel a little bit more comfortable with it, but to me this side's in spec. All right, so here's the other side and that's my 0 .068 and I'm even uh, in better shape on this side so I'm definitely not gonna grind anything on this side uh, the other side I mean because that's probably like one of these well not one but uh, this side's in better shape than the other side so I'm probably around 0 .055 on this side when it's and the range again is 0.02 to 0 0.08. All right, so I got my buddy uh, Matt over here. You guys know Matt at this point, and uh, we are lining everything up per the instructions. You got the seal, the outer seal, the backing plate, and make sure you get those right because they are side specific. You've got your bearing oriented according to Mosier and your press, press ring right there. And you gotta do that before you press that bearing on because you got one shot at this and that's it. And that'll go all the way down to that machine. That goes all the way down to that machine lip. lip right there. At the very, very base where the backing plate is. All right, now the instructions do say to uh, put some silicone around this thing. And they do provide that in the kit. You can see right there, it says apply silicone. So there it is. Yep, we forgot to uh, lubricate that seal. So we're just getting some grease around the inner lip of that seal. And we're going to put it back on. We should be good to go to press this bearing on. All right, so we're using a uh, brass drift to press these bearings on because even though I have a press, I don't really have a way to get that on there. So we're just going around and around until we get it down to that 
machine lip. All right, so what we found is we got the bearing on using that drift, but uh, that press ring there is being a stubborn, so we think we can use the hydraulic press to get that on by flipping it around. Uh, so we're gonna get this side going. And after we get this bearing on, we're gonna get the, uh, get both axes and go downstairs where the press is and see if we can get them pressed on. All right, so we got this thing set up in the press, and uh, it fits. It's tight on the bottom for the long side, but uh, we're going to see if we can make it work. All right, so the press did the job with that uh, press ring, and uh, it's kind of a pain, but hitting the bearing on with the, br the brass drift, and then that press ring uh, wasn't getting hit on. It wasn't taking that for an answer. Uh, I mean, that so tells you how tight that is. That is a really tight, tight thing. On. And uh, so anyways, we got the short side in and uh, we're starting to uh, put the four bolts in that hold it together. And then we all we got to do is reassemble the brakes. Four bolts, there's five holes. I know, but it doesn't, there's five, there's five holes and four bolts. That's the next thing you tell me like there's uh, six holes and only five <laughs> bolts in your transfer case. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. So the bottom hole does not get a bolt. That's how it was when, when I originally took it off. So all right, we're making progress. We're kind of on the home stretch now, putting back together these brakes. Matt doesn't believe it's gonna be a pain, but I'm glad he's here because he loves drum brakes and I hate them. <laughs> I hate them. All right, so like I said, the rest of this is just reassembly. So I'm gonna not film it um, because it's the opposite of what I filmed earlier, taking it apart and I'll film again once it's all put back together. All right, so here's the aftermath of uh, our project. We got the uh, got everything put back together and uh, worked on it till about, I don't know, 10 o'clock last night. I can tell you uh, we both had some choice words for uh, the engineer that designed those dr drum brakes. Man, those things were, uh, they're a pain to put back together, but uh, not quite finished. Um, just got to clean up and put the tires on. Um, we already bled the brakes, uh, so we did that last night. Everything is uh, looking great and just got a little bit of a mess to clean up, but no big deal. So I'm going to get this thing, or I'm going to get this place cleaned up and get these tires back on, go for a little spin, make sure everything's working right, and I'll call this project done. All right, so that was a big job done, and I'm really happy about it. Uh, I drove the Jeep yesterday probably about 30, 40 miles. And uh, man, everything feels great. It just feels really tight. And it just rides, it just, it's so much fun to drive. It's just a, a great running vehicle. And I'm really glad uh, we got that project behind us because that's kind of been an issue uh, ever since I had that work done at that shop. But uh, anyways, uh, turned out to be a little bit of a longer video. So thanks for checking out the video. Really appreciate your support. And as always, thanks for watching.